Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Tuesday, October the 9th, 2018. But it might as well be December 25th. It might as well be Christmas Day. Let's talk about why. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I thought this was a Tuesday like every other Tuesday. Right, lo and behold, I go and I check on the odds, and wow, things have really broken, in my opinion, in favor of the gambler today. Right, first, flat I'm not going to talk about too much in this video, but the public has finally figured out that Tyson Fury had a drug problem and has mental health issues. So the line on the Fury-Wilder fight has shifted. Folks, this morning, as of the start of this video, in some places you can get Fury at a plus 140. He is the underdog now, right? I think you need to grab this while it's being offered. I believe Fury beats Deontay Wilder. This needs to be part of your betting portfolio, right? The other part could be Wilder by KO. I'll just say this, though. Wilder and Fury are in two different sports. There is no way that if a boxing match breaks out in this fight, that Wilder outboxes Tyson Fury. I'm expecting Fury to put on a clinic, right? I'll concede, though. As Wilder himself has mentioned, Wilder only needs one punch to close the show, right? He has that kind of power. Anyway, I like the line, I like Fury, plus 140. I was expecting him to be the underdog in the fight. Curiously, <clears throat> early money came in on Fury, right? Well, now, the money that's coming in at this point is coming in on Wilder. I like Fury at a, a plus 140. Let's talk about a fight that shocked me when it was announced. Saul Alvarez coming up to super middleweight. Right, folks? This is a different neighborhood. Right? The guys in this neighborhood don't view Canelo the same way that guys do at middleweight. Understand, when you gain eight pounds and you enter a new lion's den where guys are feeling that it's their time, right? Canelo's not going to have a lot of guys worshiping him here, being careful. I consider Canelo to be one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. But at some higher weight class, <clears throat> that punching power is going to stop translating. Now, let me say this to the Golovkin crowd, and I'm with you. I thought Golovkin beat Canelo not just the last fight, but the first fight. I'm one of those people, right? I, I watched the 24 rounds. I have yet to see Canelo beat Golovkin. One man's opinion, go ahead and rip me in the comment section. That's fair, right? I know Canelo has some fans who love to let me know they're fans of Canelo in the comment section of every video in which I mention the fighter. Okay, that's fair enough. Go ahead and rip me. But what I want the Golovkin people to understand is Canelo might have a few secrets, right? I'm not even talking about tainted meat, folks. I'm not even talking about tainted meat. But is it possible that Canelo wasn't even really a true middleweight. That Canelo actually walks around at light heavyweight. Is that possible? Is it possible that he felt more comfortable fighting Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 164 than he did squeezing himself into 160? After all, let's be blunt here, clenbuterol is supposed to be a fat burner. Right? That's supposed to be something to help you make weight. Right? Just food for thought. Whether you think he got it off the food truck, whether you think he knew he was taking it, whether you think some 
well-meaning member of his camp decided, hey, we need this, whatever you think happened, just understand clenbuterol is supposed to help you lose weight. Now I'm supposed to believe that after one of the bigger fights in the middleweight division in several years, that Canelo has just decided, you know what, Rocky Fielding, he gets on my nerves, I want his title eight pounds up. Right, folks, this may not be a fighter experimenting, taking a fight off, leaving his division just on a guest type thing, you know, figuring, hey, I have a voluntary let me go fight some guy outside the division and then let me return home to the middleweight division. Now this may be a guy who's starting a journey into the light heavy, excuse me, the super middleweight division. Right? This might be a guy who's tired of losing those eight extra pounds from super middle down to middleweight before fighting at middleweight. Right? Think it through, too. Canelo fought Liam Smith, who is one of his biggest supporters, by the way, of all the guys Canelo has fought. Liam Smith openly tells interviewers, this guy's a great fighter. Right? Well, just to understand, Liam's brother is a lad named Callum Smith. Right? Now, Callum is alpha. In fact, Rocky Fielding has one loss on his dossier. In one of the better promotions I've seen, they called it Who's Fooling Who? Callum Smith met Rocky Fielding in the middle of the ring. During that first round, Fielding then had to concede the pocket before being stopped. Now you're telling me with all the promotional possibilities, with the huge fan base in the United Kingdom, with the fact that Fielding is crossing the Atlantic for this fight, but if Canelo beats Fielding, you know, everyone in the UK is going to want to see Canelo against Callum Smith, Liam's brother, right? You know, Callum could easily sell thousands of tickets by saying, hey, this is a family issue. He beat up my brother. I want revenge. Of course, the fight would be for title, right? George Groves could say, hey, you know what? I got sloppy there against Callum Smith that last round. The fight was competitive up to there. Uh, I'd welcome the opportunity to fight Canelo. George Groves is box office gold, right? The point of this video is to say, look, don't discount the possibility, and I'm just speculating here, that Canelo is done at middleweight, right? Let's be blunt either way. If Canelo, after gaining eight pounds, We'll call it gaining, even though he still has to lose weight, in my opinion, to make 168. Right? Canelo, after fighting at 168, if he decides to lose weight to get back to middleweight, you need to run to the casino and put money on Golovkin. That's just too much yo-yoing on the body of a guy who, you know, let's face it, in the past has had stamina problems. Right? Look at his fight against El Perro. Right? In the past, has a reputation for taking minutes of rounds off. Right? You're telling me he's going to lose eight pounds, get back to middleweight to fight a guy who arguably beat him twice already? A guy who got his unbeaten streak snapped by Canelo and who is going to have no problem motivating himself for that third fight. Let's say he sticks around 168. Let's say he beats Fielding. He has a share of the title. You mean to tell me that he's not going to think unification? Isn't that who Canelo is? He's a guy who thinks unification. You mean to tell me he's not going to think unification against Callum Smith? There's another name you need to know. And I don't know why this guy isn't more popular. This is one of those things that stump me. Understand, even if, and this is just the view from this seat, even if Canelo beats Rocky Fielding, right, I, I won't, 
I'll just say this. If a fight is announced between him and Gilberto Ramirez, name you need to know, I'm going to be running to the sports book to put money down on Ramirez. Right? Mark my words. Ramirez probably beats Canelo by three or four rounds. Right? Understand, Canelo is a small guy. He's relatively small. I'm not talking about weight. I'm talking about stature. He's relatively small. Ramirez has the gift of length. He knows how to use it. He doesn't have to get in the pocket to beat Canelo. He could stay outside behind one of boxing's best jabs. Folks, he's been a champ at 168 pounds now for some time. He has one of boxing's best jabs. He could just get outside and jab Canelo to death. Well, let's talk about Rocky Fielding, right? Let me say this too. A Callum Smith-Canelo fight would be interesting because Smith doesn't use his height. Smith wants to fight you. Smith leans forward. Understand, at the end of the day, Canelo is really a technician. As you see Canelo, he's doing a lot of things right. In other words, Canelo doesn't have his chin over his feet like Callum Smith. Callum Smith is a little bit unorthodox. A guy like Canelo might look at him and say, gee, this guy's not going to fight 6'3". He's going to fight 5'10". I'm 5'8". I have a chance. Right? Well, let's talk about Rocky Fielding. It's Christmas time today because never in my life, at least not the part of my life that I remember, have I seen a guy with a title fighting a dude who's gaining eight pounds to fight him? Eight pounds, right? And the guy somehow is a plus 800 underdog. Folks, this is ridiculous. Somebody put the wrong price on this fight. Rocky Fielding, I'm positive. Fielding, by the way, used to fight at light heavy. Rocky Fielding, I'm positive, isn't even convinced that Canelo's the better body puncher in this fight. Understand, Fielding, in a fight I was wrong on, I was shocked watching this fight. Fielding just beat Tyrone Zyge with body shots. Right? Fielding believes in his body attack. Right? Now, you mean to tell me that this guy, who's only lost once, right, to Callum Smith, who himself wears a belt, right? You mean to tell me that this guy is an 8 to 1 underdog? Is the casino really pricing this such that if these two guys fought nine times, that Canelo would win eight of the nine? Folks, that's ridiculous. The public right now is a little bit delusional. I'm telling you, some of the best bets you can make in your life are when a guy is popular, a bit too popular. And the public thinks you're absolutely crazy for betting against him. Folks, I'm going to take my chances here. I get the reigning super middleweight champion at 8 to 1 odds? Think about how ridiculous these odds are. If Rocky Fielding was fighting Callum Smith. Hell, if he was fighting Adonis Stevenson, the light heavyweight champ, one division up. He wouldn't be going off at these odds. Now you could believe, you could believe that Canelo is a future Boxing Hall of Famer, right? And he is, let's face it, the resume looks great. Um, two fights against Golovkin, he has yet to officially lose to Golovkin, right? We're just going by the judges' scorecards, right? Lord knows he's fought some other big names, right? Miguel Cotto, I think, is headed to the Hall of Fame. He beat Cotto. Right? He did go the distance with Floyd Mayweather. One judge called that fight a draw. Right? So you have a guy who officially 
got a draw against Mayweather on one boxing scorecard, and that's significant. That's significant because very few guys have gotten draws in Mayweather fights on any judge's scorecard, right? Very few. I think De La Hoya, ironically, Canelo's trainer, excuse me, his promoter, um, won a judge's scorecard when he fought Floyd Mayweather. But understand, Canelo officially, and I don't know what fight the judge was watching, gets a draw against Mayweather on one judge's scorecard, gets a draw, and I don't know what fight these judges were watching, but gets a draw the first time against Golovkin. And then wins against Golovkin. Right? When you add that in with all his other fights, Austin Trout, Erislandy Lara, right? Canelo is a future boxing Hall of Famer. But folks, weights matter. Weights matter. And so here, it's ridiculous. Just like it would be ridiculous for Alexander Usyk to fight a reigning heavyweight champ and to be an 8-1 to one favorite. It's ridiculous here for Canelo to be getting these odds. By the way, on the Canelo side of the play, he's 20-1. to one. My point to you is this. To the gamblers out there just looking for a mistake from a casino like this one, where you get to go in and get the ticket, right? As the fight gets closer, you can bet other options, right? You're going to be hard-pressed, even if the fight is in New York. You're going to be hard-pressed to get better odds than this. Rocky Fielding, who has a greater than 50% KO ratio. By the way, Fielding's knocking out super middleweights. Not middleweights, super middleweights. Right? You're getting the champ here at 8 to 1. It's Christmas time, folks, in October. Right? The play I like there is, right now, Rocky Fielding at 8-1. to one. Yes, the odds matter. 8-1 right? to one on Rocky Fielding. By the way, there's a height dynamic here. Fielding 6-1. Canelo is really 5-8. I don't care what he's listed as. Right? He's really like 5-8. Right? Fielding is going to come in the pocket. He is going to try to rough up the guy. But understand, Fielding could take a step back and force Canelo to come to him. Right now, Canelo was front foot dominant in the rematch against Golovkin. And it is true that no one roots for Goliath. You see a little man looking inspired, right, who's fearless against a big man. A lot of judges are going to say, wow, you know, I'm going to favor the little man. Right? He's bucking the trend. But I do need for people to understand that this fight is not taking place in Las Vegas, right? It's not. It's taking place in New York City. That's a different part of the world altogether. Let me also say, too, boxing has blowback, right? Where guys are perceived to be getting really good treatment from judges, it becomes an issue. So then the judges on the guy's latest fight will say, hey, well, I'm not going to be blinded by this guy's reputation. Right? Manny Pacquiao was loved by fans and judges. Right? Many people believe, not me, but many others, believe that the judges were hard on Pacquiao when he fought Timothy Bradley the first time. Right? Bradley was awarded the decision in that fight. I'm telling you, Oscar De La Hoya was loved by judges. Right? I remember Oscar uh, officially beating Pernell Whitaker and thinking, gee, what? Didn't the judges value great defense? But I'll say this. You look at the De La Hoya legacy, you look at the Felix Trinidad fight. Now, there's no question that De La Hoya is up in that fight before he starts sticking and moving the last three rounds. 
There's no question that he looked the best anyone had looked against then unbeaten Felix Trinidad at that time. The judges looked at De La Hoya, who wasn't even hurt, up on his toes, sticking and moving the last three rounds of the fight. They felt he was running. Officially, Felix Trinidad beat Oscar De La Hoya, right? All I'm saying is, I'm not even sure here, folks, if Canelo gets the decision. Right? I'll agree. The Luis Ortiz Deontay Wilder fight took place in New York City. I'll agree. I don't understand the scorecards in that fight. But let's just say the judges in New York, in my opinion, are a lot less celebrity driven than they are in Las Vegas. I think this is a difficult fight for Canelo in a new weight class. And I have no idea how you're getting these kind of odds on Rocky Fielding, right? I like Fielding right here at eight to one. <laughs> That's what you're getting, folks. Bet one dollar, win eight. Eight to one to successfully defend his title. Let's not even be confused on whose title it is. It's Rocky Fielding's title, right? We'll revisit this as we get closer to the fight. Finally, there's a fight out here where I'm absolutely astonished by the odds. Now understand, I privately feel that Alexander Usyk is one of the absolute best in the sport of boxing pound for pound. Right? He's one of those guys I think of when I'm thinking of Terrence Crawford. Right? When I'm thinking of, yes, Tyson Fury. When I'm thinking of Mikey Garcia. By the way, Errol Spence complained to the press the other day. He said, gee, I need a fight. Errol, if you need a fight, then why don't you accept Mikey Garcia's challenge? But I digress. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Usyk's going to be incredibly successful at heavyweight. Right? I think Usyk is a guy who knows how to box, who has legs in this flat-footed, big, clunky heavyweight era that'll make him much more nimble, much more nimble than, let's say, a Deontay Wilder or a AJ. Right? But, but, the odds matter in everything. In everything. And even though I feel that Usyk's going to beat Tony Bellew, right now today, you're getting Tony, believe it or not, at a plus 450. Folks, what am I missing here? Tony, excellent cruiserweight in his own right. Excellent. Who has been in with heavy hitting heavyweights. Understand, David Hay today with a recovering Achilles is still a murderous puncher. David Hay is one of the better punchers I've seen at heavyweight. Right? He's sudden, he hits hard, he has ring coverage. Now, Tony fought him twice. I'll agree. The David Hay Tony fights isn't prime Hay, right? The first fight, Hay's on one leg. The uh, second fight, Hay's timing is off and he really can't fight backing up. Okay, okay, fine, right? But Tony's been in with heavyweights. And Tony has held his own. So here again, as much as I like Usyk, you know, Usyk, won the WBSS for the cruiserweight division, right? There's a bubble on him in the betting markets right now. I get Tony at a plus 450. Who's he fighting? Tyson Fury? Come on, this... <laughs> I wouldn't expect to get long odds on Tony like this if he were fighting Dylan White. Here he's fighting a guy who... Well, I'll just put it to you this way. Today, and this is subject to change. As more information comes out, we'll adjust. 
but I need to get a position here because the price is so cheap. In other words, I might not be, I once bought a car at an auction and I was really just there trying to figure out the auction. I wasn't even there to, to actually buy, right? I didn't even have my financing ready. I was at a car auction. The price of the car was so low that when the guy said going once, going twice, I raised my hand. I was like, look, man, I'll, I got a bid here on this car. I ended up having that car for about four years. Brother had to hustle after the auction to come up with the funds to pay. But the price has to dictate what you do. And here they're giving you Tony, who hasn't lost for years, at a plus 450. Folks, Tony used to be cruiserweight champion. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's get real here. Tony's an excellent fighter in his own right. Right? At these, you know, these days, I think Tony's toughest opponent seems to be his wife, who doesn't want him continuing his career. Right? Tony obviously is hanging around for legacy reasons. This is the guy who has had the career. Who says to himself, you know, I just need the cherry on top. I just need the last piece to fill in my puzzle. I can't go into the world of retirement without knowing to myself whether I could beat this Olympic gold medalist, this unified cruiserweight champion. Right? Well, all I can say is they're compensating you for the risk here. And what I like is the fact that, you know, Tony has the kind of chin where he went to heavyweight. He didn't get stopped at heavyweight. Right? Tony's not a guy with a soft chin. Guy's a great chin. You know, today, if you asked me for a hedge, I would say, take Tony at plus 450 and then hedge that with the over. So if Usyk wins a decision, okay, you're good. Well, anyway, I believe the plus 450 on Tony is simply too good to pass up. This is like the car auction. You're thinking to yourself, damn, Usyk's a great fighter. Wow, Usyk's unbeaten. Usyk's on a roll. Then they tell you a plus 450. You got to go, forget, forget Usyk. Let me go put some money on Tony. Right? I like Tony here at plus 450. Let's hope the casino doesn't wake up and figure out that someone somewhere is making a mistake. Isn't that fight in the UK? Well, is, is, is there some news we don't know? Is uh, Tony, you know, out of a car crash or something? Come on. Well, anyway, that's how I see it. As I said, it's December the 25th here. You're getting incredible value. You're getting Tyson Fury as an underdog. Just think about that for a second. Right? Tyson Fury as an underdog. You're getting Rocky Fielding against a guy who's never fought at 168. Who's fighting for Rocky's title. And you're getting Fielding at 8-1 to one odds. Then you're getting Tony Bellew in the UK at a plus 450. Folks, go to your casino right now. These are the lines. In my opinion, don't wait for them to adjust because I'm expecting a big adjustment. Right? I like Tyson Fury, Rocky Fielding, and Tony Bellew here. I am going to hedge the Bellew play because I do think Usyk ultimately wins, although if these guys fought five and a half times, I would not expect Usyk to win four and a half of the five and a half. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.